had a dream last night Lord, it took me by surprise A handsome man came courting me With a sinful smile and yellow eyes He sent me my Jezebel It's been a lonely travel from the pits of hell And I'll come to ask you if you'll be mine And I'll be your lover till the end of time Well, I must say I was flattered at first Cause men don't make offers like this on earth It's a long way to travel to the other side Long time to burn when you're the devil's bride So there's too many things that I've come to love And I wanna spend my life in the world above There's too many things that I've gotta do I don't include eternity with you Down on his knees as if to play He lowered his head and said goodbye He could no longer bear to be without me And tears welled up in his yellow eyes Cause it's the last train going down below And I can hear that whistle sounding loud and low The devil wants to marry me And be my lover eternally
hell of a night to be out on the open road. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. Aldous Lennon Balfour. Aldous Lennon Balfour. That's, uh, quite a name. Indeed it is. Aldous was my great-great-granddaddy. A southern gentleman and a decorated Confederate general. Lennon being John Lennon and Balfour was my, my mama's maiden name. As a child, I often imagined my mama and Mr. John Lennon betrothed. And the reason for his absence was he was always on the road. But in all probability, she got around. She never did appease my exuberant curiosity regarding the identity of whose progeny I'd grown to become. <laughs> so, uh, what is it that you do, Mr. Balfour? Well, I suspect the more interesting question is what are you doing picking up a stranger in the middle of nowhere? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, I'm just twisting your areolas. <laughs> I'm a man of many talents. I've been everywhere from a, a grave digger to a door-to-door -door salesman. Some even fancy me a doctor. I guess the truncated modus operandus is... I get by. Are you gonna... reciprocate? Huh? Um, what are you doing on such a oppressively precipitous and dare I say... Gloomy night. Um, nothing much. Just uh, on my way to to, to visit, visit family. Family. How sweet the sound. Family. So, um, how about you? Where are you off to? Where are you headed? <laughs> well, I'm just a poor, wayfound stranger, traveling this dark road alone. It is a dark road, but neither of us is alone.
pardon the intrusion, but... Judging by the scarcity of your traveling accoutrements, I say you left in a hurry. Those bloodshot eyes and that angry ding on your brow, well, they indicate that you, sir, have been at blows. Wish I hazard a guess. Has marital bliss gone south of heaven? If I was gonna guess again, I'd say, what are you running Enough. for? Enough! Enough. All right, I, I don't feel the need to discuss my, my personal life with a, with a fucking hitcher. Something on this goddamn stereo. That's it. <laughs> That's it. I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger traveling through this world below. And I know dark clouds will gather around me. And I know my way is rough and steep. And the beautiful fields that rise before me And my needs are rough and steep <laughs> I knew it Poor wayfaring stranger That was my mama's favorite song In an effort to alleviate the weight of this oppressive silence, allow me to entertain you with a poem. A man of words and not of deeds is like a garden full of weeds. And when the weeds begin to grow, it's like a garden full of snow. And when the snow begins to fall, well, it's like a bird upon a wall. And when the bird away does fly, it's like an eagle in the sky. And when the sky begins to roar, it's like a lion at your door. And when your door begins to crack, it's like a stick across your back. And when your back begins to smart, it's like a penknife in your heart. And when your heart begins to bleed, you're dead and dead and dead indeed. That's dark. It's really dark, man. You, uh, got anything a little lighter?
crooked and forbidden sigh across his lips. A stranger beat a soaked fist across a coarse wooden beam. An old farmer welcomed him in. And he fed the tired wanderer warm coffee and cold grits from his best tins. And they sat by the fire and the, the stranger began. His was a tale of woe and bloody-minded violence. Ah, said the stranger, am a blight on the whole of this cursed earth. I am a murderer of women and children. Of this you can be sure. At least that's what I'm told. I arrived home one night to find my wedded bliss torn asunder by a grim and albeit messy scene. And I assure you, I have no recollection of the events that painted my life a thin vermilion hue. Now undaunted by the morose tone of the story, the old farmer inquired, Well, <laughs> if you have no recollection of the events, then surely you are not guilty. No, said the stranger. I was there. I saw the life vanish. First, from my youngest, all the way to my eldest. And the strange thing was, it's as if I was watching from behind my own eyes. said the stranger. Is this a tale? Or is it a real story? They're all tales and stories. Everything derives from something, does it not? Are you not made of itty bitty specks that begin their life in the heart of a dying sun a long way off? Huh? Now, granted, the stranger was tired from being on the road, but still he pressed on. And he told the old farmer of his pretty little life and his pretty little wife, Sarah. Yes, in a town by the sea, his pretty little daughters, one, two, three, and then a thick cloud. A wicked wind moaned, a veil, a cancer, crept into our lovely home. I think I'd rather hear about the, the perfect man, and the, and the perfect life, and the perfect town, okay? That, that, that sounds nice. Let's, let, let's try that out, okay? Huh? Distracted. Whew! I guess my legendary skills of storytelling had you enraptured. Whew. Ah. You really didn't see no, didn't that wily coyote skid across the road? I didn't see anything. All right, if you touch this wheel again or anything else in the car, I'm gonna drop your ass off. Oh. You got it? You got oh, it? Easy, easy there, cowboy. I hear you. There's no need for such extreme measures. Hell, I was just trying to save our collective keisters from a coyote calamity. Oh, woo! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh.
Now the stranger, being a doctor in a particularly small town, well, he was required to make house calls and therefore was frequently absent from home. And one dark and stormy night, very similar to this, he was called away. And while he was away, a shadow appeared on his doorstep. What, what is this story? Huh? What, what is it about you? Or what you? It is, and it isn't. So I implore, bend your ear and listen for a while with some degree of contemplation. For what I'm imparting is of a delightfully grave nature. And a little bit of truth. So I implore. Do I have your attention? Hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm listening. This is of grave and serious nature. Oh, I'm, I'm listening. You, you just keep on talking. <laughs> oh, I'm listening. Just keep on talking. She a pretty girl? Hmm? What? That there love tap. She a looker? What are you talking about? The creature that gave that to you. <laughs> the woods are lovely, dark, and deep. And you have secrets that you keep. And we have miles to go before we sleep. Do tell, do tell. What's to tell? Oh, I had a... Falling out with... Someone. And now I'm here. On the road. Love you dare not speak its name. For fear it'll rise up from the ashes and pluck your bleeding heart from its still ruddy corpse. <laughs> I do entertain myself. So, what was he? Was it a little deal? A salacious fellatio? How about a botched buggery? <laughs> Was it her? Or the others? Enough. Whoa, whoa, hasty! All right, listen, listen. Please excuse my exuberant verbosity. I am a, I'm a naturally curious person, a, a, a teller of tales. I implore, do not discard me on account of my, my overly witty nature. I, I have, I have other stories. My mortal enemy was a No chicken. more stories. Enough. Enough. Did you say a chicken? <laughs> oh, make no mistake. He was a voracious and formidable foe. You see, as a child, every morning when I stepped out my front door, that abominable aviator was lurking in wait. He would give chase, jumping, clawing, scratching my backside until blood it dripped down my garments. And this went on for quite some time. Until one day, the general, he mysteriously disappeared. Where were we? 
Did you say a, a chicken named General? Naturally, an inquiry came to our door regarding the disappearance of that ill-tempered raptor. Mama, she, uh, she hesitantly chose to believe me. But I saw the truth in her eyes. She saw something in me I didn't see. I weaved up a colorful tale of how heartbroken I was over the mysterious disappearance of that horrible creature that had haunted my dreams for so long. All right. So wait, how's the story in? Uh, you and your mother having fried chicken? In truth? No. My mama, rest her soul, she found that wretched rooster torn to pieces out back in the tall grass. That thereafter, I catch her watching me, looking at me in thought as if trying to glean some grain of knowledge from my mannerisms. Why couldn't you just let the story end with terrorized by a chicken. Huh? Because it wasn't a month's post. In the dead of winter. When the sheriff came by with the... the county social worker. And they sat me down. And they... He told me that they found my mama's car up on a logging road. And that apparently, she had driven a car as far as it could go, up into the deep snow, until the car wouldn't go no more. And then she opened the door and she stepped outside and she walked into the snow. And that is where they found her frozen corpse. Yeah, we had a fight. My, my, my wife, Sarah, we, we... We had a fight and... That's how I got this... This, this, this bruise. Why? Why what? Why'd you stay? I don't know. You stayed because you were compelled to. You don't want to be abandoned again. Face your demons alone. Even though you didn't want to be there with her. You stayed till you couldn't take it anymore. Dad, there was no escape in doing what no, no, you it did. It wasn't an escape. It wasn't as, oh, as absolute sure or easy as... Sure no, 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 no. Huh? You couldn't just up and leave her. Because she'd fall apart. So you waited and waited and waited until she went crazy on you. And that's when you did it. That's when you did it. And here you are, driving away. You were right, though. Who could blame you? Doing what you did. <laughs> oh, there's more, isn't there? There's always more. Didn't you say you were a doctor? No. Yeah, I, I think you did. You said you were a doctor. 
Did I say that? Yeah. No. I think you did, yeah. No, I'm not. You, yeah, you, you did. You, you said you had a family. They're dead. They're all dead. But let's be honest, Jeff. We both knew that. <laughs> oh! Looks like the cavalry's here. What the hell, where'd they come from? Shitty weather for being out here all alone. Oh, uh, sir. Sir. Hey, buddy. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, um, everything's fine. Driver's license, please. Is there like a um, tail light or something? You just sit tight, I'll be right back. Are you to Sarah M. Lambert? Huh? Lambert, Sarah. Person whose name is his vehicle's registered to. <laughs> Step out of the vehicle, please. Uh, sir, would you step out of the car, please? Sir, I need you to step out of the car. Sir? Sir? Exactly what do you think is gonna happen here tonight, sir? Look, my back feels like crap. If I have to reach in there and drag you out of this goddamn window, I'm telling you... Piggy likes his corn mash. Straight off the cob. Oh. Well, you can thank me later. Turn the key and drive. Oh, 
Mm. Oh. Yeah. He's out cold. Jeff, huh? What? It was... It was your wife. The one you spoke of. It was your wife. And you killed her. It could have been. Could have been just a story. A figment of our imagination. Me, you, Piggy back there. Who knows? What would you have me say, huh? Look, Jeff, I don't like this any more than you do. Well, <laughs> that's not true, but it had to be done. And to, to answer your question, they're all dead. Hilda. Hattie, Holly, the vulture, the serpent, the splinter. I saw dark shadows cast my pretty girls, and there they lie, so mutilated they were hardly recognizable. And do you think it was me? Huh? These dirty deeds that our souls bleed. And then I see my wife screaming, stop! Stop! Exactly! Is it coming to Uh, I thought we just call it even, huh? Yeah, you let me off at the roadside. And just done with it. Hmm? I would highly recommend you not doing that. Oh! Fuck you, you fucker! Stop! 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 Stop. 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 Hmm. So, 
Let me ask you something. Can you put your hands across Sarah Bear's throat? Could she scream? She's fucking dead! That's what she is! No! You did! Come on, admit it! Yes, you did. Yes, you did! Jab. Hey, Jeff, these are windy roads. Come on, you gotta slow down. Now shut up, old man! Stop. Just fucking stop! Down! Stop! Was entertaining. <laughs> Jeff. I think this is funny, you sick son of a bitch. You think this is fucking funny? <laughs> you think this is all you sick son of a bitch. Oh, this is fucking. Well, I'm out You're out of your fucking mind. You're, You're out of your fucking your mind. Half, your offspring, huh? Oh. Why'd you do it, huh? Tell me, why'd you let me know? Yeah, it's like, oh, oh, it's, it's too, too hard, hard to be a daddy. Is it too hard to be a daddy for you, huh? Like when they're oh. fucking fussing and screaming yeah, and getting into it. Daddy, no, huh? Is that what it's about? Oh, God. You want this to be a dad, but you, you couldn't handle it, could you? Oh, oh, do tell, I'll scribble all this down, huh? Let me know, please. What the do with the fucking yeah. 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 It feels good. I am the crazy one. Well, I'm the crazy one. Yeah. What are you going to do now? Hey. Hey. 
Hey, am I, am I talking to Jeff? Or, uh, your passenger? Pretty good guy. You just uh, got yourself into something that's out of control. Hey, Jeff. I'm not doing too good back here. Look, uh, up the road a ways, there's a uh, farmhouse. Inside, that's my wife. And Jeff, she, she needs me to come home to her. Can you imagine what it's like to be all alone? She needs me to come home, Jeff. He's right, Jeff. She needs him to come home. I mean, she's all he has. She needs her. She needs us. And doesn't that sound nice? Curling up by a fire, having some Warm coffee and some cold grits. And I could just tell you a lot more stories. Stories, 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 stories. I'm so tired of your fucking stories, your bloody fucking stories. You understand, though? My story is real. Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Jeff. Uh, Jeff, look at me. Hey, you know this. This can. This can stop. This can stop being bad right now. Huh? You're in control, Jeff. There you go. I'm in control. I'm in control. You're in control. I'm in control. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in control. <laughs> I'm in control. I'm in control. I'm in control. I'm in control! You motherfucker! Ah! Do you not understand? Do you not get it? I'm not going anywhere! So! In the words of God, stop fucking ignoring me. So 
Well, I thought that old fucker never shut up. What the fuck did you do? What the fuck did you do? What the fuck did you do? It's a cycle, Jeff. It's always a cycle. Start a long way back. And now it's your turn. You're never getting rid of it, Jeff, but at least you got me, right? You always got me. <laughs> I ain't going anywhere, I already said that. But there's nothing to worry about. Because from here on out, it's just you and me. Two peas in a pod, right? Just like your daddy. Nothing like my fucking daddy. Oh, you're nothing, nothing like your like daddy. Nothing like my fucking daddy. He's not fucking here right now. Nothing like my fucking daddy. <laughs> you're still denying. You're still denying. I'm here, Jeff. I'm here to tell you the truth. Nobody's fucking here. Nobody's fucking here. What the oh, fuck did you do? What the fuck did you do? What the fuck did you do? What the fuck did you do? Hey, mister! You okay? I... I... I saw your car in the ditch back there. Uh, uh, mister... Uh, you okay? Mister? Better than a stack of pancakes. Oh. Well, I'm 
Glad I didn't leave you out there to tease the coyotes. of a night to be out on the road alone. Allow me to introduce myself. Go rain on my skin. Hot smart on my cheek. Veil of darkness creeping in. Lord, I've been dead. Yeah. 
Buzzards pick my bones So happy to have found me In the backwoods of love 